Welcome to the Master Circle. We are so glad that you are here with us today. Now, the Master Circle is your home base, go-to monthly session where you can get expert insight and ideas about all things fundraising. So, if you've got a burning fundraising question, maybe have a special challenge. Access to great fundraising practices, techniques, and tools is what we are all about. So if you're fundraising for a cause and want to really get some great traction, well, hey, you are in the right place. Here's how it works. The Master Circle is innovative fundraising techniques that are driven by you, your questions, and what you want to know about fundraising. Every month we collect and respond to questions from our audience, and we really dig deep into the topics that you suggest. Now, the Master Circle is brought to you by Mosaic Nonprofit Development. We're a fundraising education firm focused on creating effective and sustainable fundraising initiatives for nonprofits. We work hand in hand with the leadership, professionals, volunteers, and investors of NGOs around the globe to teach them how to develop strategies and implement solutions that increase resources and enable mission achievement. We are Mosaic Nonprofit Development, leading innovation in fundraising education. Now, one of the ways that Mosaic helps you get really effective fundraising results for your nonprofit is through online courses, like today's live Master Circle session. We have workshops and we do one-on-one -on -one fundraising coaching where we work with you very intensively to focus on what's really going to advance your cause. Now, if you've got something bigger or if you need more help than coaching or courses, drop us a line. We'll do everything that we can to help. So I'm Heidi Hancock. I'm here with Mosaic here today, really ready to focus on helping causes get wildly successful with fundraising. I'm a certified fundraising executive, and I've raised over $70 million for causes all around the world. I really love working with folks globally to help them get resources for their cause so that they can achieve their mission. Hey, David, tell us a little bit about you. Hello, Heidi. Good to be here today. I'm David Svet, also with Mosaic Nonprofit Development. I'm forging the path for nonprofits everywhere through marketing communications with Mosaic. I like kayaking, fishing, and butchering wood. I'm a mediocre woodworker. What do we got going on today, Heidi? Oh my gosh, woodworking, huh? Well, David, I'm glad to hear that you're butchering wood and not too many other things, but this is a really cool session. We have had so many requests lately from folks who are talking about hooking up with great corporate partners. Who's in charge of marketing between those partners and how can um, their cause really offer some important things to attract a good partner? So today we're digging deep into symbiotic relationships and the sandboxes that we can play in together with our for-profit friends in cause marketing, get the right fit for profitable partnerships. Now, you guys, the Master Circle is cool because you can ask your questions anytime they hit. So for today's topic, we've got some questions that were sent in, and we'll also be answering your questions as we go along today. So let's see. Check it out. Don't forget. Your participation here in today's Master Circle is good for one CEU, that's Continuing Education Point, towards your CFRE, your Certified Fundraising Executive Certification or Renewal. So be sure to make a note on your calendar and um, put the date of today's session and the title in your tracker. And on other coolness, just to let you know, we are recording this session. And if everything goes well with the technology gods, we will make the recording available to you. So now remember when I said that this was an interactive session? today? Well, the Master Circle is cool because you can ask your questions anytime they hit. And here's your first test. I want you to go into your control box, find the question box on your control panel, and I need you to type in a note to let us know two things. First, we're going to do the easy ones first. Wiggle your fingers and let us know if you are here and if you can hear everything. Are you seeing the slides change? Sometimes we have some issues with the platform and things kind of go a little bit awry without us even knowing. So take a moment, find that box. It's going to be important that you can let us know um, if you can hear us. Great. Looks like we've gotten some response. Okay, take a moment, find that. All right, while you're um, here, here's a little extra information if you're still having some difficulty um, with the sound or if you encounter some a little bit later. We found that the if the sound goes bad, the best thing to do is to log out of the session and just log back in. You can always dial in on your phone and today's session is 951-266-6126 with an access code of 894-219-314 um, and then just in case you get bounced out of GoToWebinar and you can't find your confirmation link, I mean you come back to the GoToWebinar landing page, the webinar ID number is 146 
250-651. Excellent. Okay, great. So it looks like I've got pretty resounding 100%. Everybody can hear and we're seeing the we're seeing the slides change. And great, Liz, you submitted a question already and we're going to get to that. Excellent. So thank you, thank you. Now, while you're typing, um, second question, remember because I said we needed to know two things. We, just let us know where you're logging in from, what city, what country. We really like work with people, again, all over the world and, and, and hearing, uh, hearing the different challenges that people are facing, knowing that we can really help people reach out into their own communities no matter where they are through the magic of technology. Woohoo! All right, Columbia, Maryland. Great, Katie. Well, welcome. Fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, Karen lets us know she's uh, signing in from Annandale, Virginia. Great. We've got good representation out on the East Coast. And excellent. I bet we've got even more, even farther east. Aha! Carla's letting us know that she's uh, logging in from, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this correctly, Athlone, Cape Town or Athlone, Cape Town. Fantastic. So we got South Africa on the line. Yay! So we're going way east. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so you found your box. Okay, now, once you've got your box open, this is the most important question. You know, I want you to get ready. Take a pause. So that you get the most out of today's session, um, please tell us what one thing you would like to walk away knowing today. Now, it can be on today's topic, cause marketing. And cause marketing is related to um, shared value corporate sponsor sponsorships and, co and partners with corporate spon uh, sponsors and partnerships that way. So, yes, that's the topic today, cause marketing. Or it can be on completely unrelated to today's topic. But it would be an important thing to keep it in the fundraising realm. So, you know, questions about where to eat when you happen to be running around in Arizona Arizona is probably not going to be the best thing for today. So anyway, so go ahead, find that box, let us know, especially corporate uh, partnerships, cause marketing, making sure that your partnership is a good fit. What is that one important thing? What's the challenge that you're really facing um, today as we're, working, as we're working on that? So pull that question box out. I'm going to give you a second to think about it. And we're going to really dig in as we get going so that we've got that going. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So Karen, David, Karen lets us know she's looking for an overview. She doesn't know about cause marketing. She wants to know what it is and why it's important. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So taking a look. Great. Janet saying, Janet saying, you know, we do a lot of corporate sponsorships, but what is the difference between cause marketing and corporate sponsorships? Great question. Okay, Janet. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Great. Okay. All right, guys. Now remember, you can answer, ask questions anytime they hit. Um, George wants to know about tips for documenting cause marketing relationships with the for-profit. Perfect. Great question, mm -hmm. George. We're going to dig into that um, today, too, so that everybody's got their ducks in line. Now, as you're thinking through, and if we're going through and we hit a, a topic um, and your question occurs to you, feel free to type it in. We're going to go through our, our questions today that have been sent in to us, and then at the end of our session today, we'll be answering um, questions as they come along. So don't hesitate to type your question in. Looking forward to it. Is you ready to go, David? I am ready to go. Excellent. So kick us off today, David. What have we got? Well, uh -huh. A cute bear, huh? <laughs> All <laughs> right, David, you're going to have to tie this one together to me. What does a cute bear have to do with cause marketing? <laughs> Well, that is a cute bear. That's a seriously cute bear. It looks like he's having fun rolling around. I'd just like to go up and give it a big old belly rub. <laughs> uh, but uh, that would be a bad idea. Don't let it fool you. It is a grizzly bear, and that's one of the most dangerous animals on Earth. Its claws are longer than your fingers. Uh, it would shred you in a heartbeat. So cause marketing with a corporate partnership. This is something to keep in mind when a nonprofit looks for a corporate partner from the for-profit world for a cause marketing relationship. They may look like they're gung-ho for your cause and they want to sponsor you, but remember the devil is in the details and they are in business to make money. They have a fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders to turn a profit. And if push comes to shove, you can get shoved under the bus. So, wow. Okay. We've got today are <laughs> some st super strategic approaches that you can use to build a solid win-win relationship between your organization and your for-profit partners. Basically, taming the bear. Excellent. So that we don't ever see those claws come out against your cause. Oh, great. Well, this is perfect. So then. 
We're all about getting the corporations involved in f- with fundraising for your organization through cause marketing sponsorships. So here are some of the strategic approaches that you're going to be able to use today. We're covering choosing the right partner, how to find corporations that are going to take an active interest in promoting your organization and your cause. We're going to look at what goes into a, an equitable relationship, what's on both sides of the fence, um, and how do you structure that relationship with your for-profit business partner so that you both get what you need and neither feels cheated and no claws come out. Um, we're also going to take a look at here for a cause, weighing the risks and rewards. So entering into cause marketing a relationship and a corporate sponsorship or a corporate partnership, um, there's a lot of things to consider and some of the things that you want to make sure that you're keeping your eye on, um, whether it's going to advance your cause or if it's going to create more headaches for you. What you um, So we're going to go over some of those things when you're thinking about getting married to a corporate uh, partner. And now we've also got a bonus topic today. Um, we have several questions about making your case. How do you actually structure your proposal so that it works for your corporate partner? Excellent. All right, David. So let's set the stage for cause marketing. <laughs> Have a good uh, time. Yay! Well, this is about the time of year for us here. I'm up in Boston, and I uh, I do happen to live on the beach, and I'd say this is my kind of fun. Yay for puppy dogs! Um, so it looks like he's playing fetch on the beach. What's the story, and what does this have to do with cause marketing? He's a happy one, or she's a happy one. It's a Jack Russell Terrier, and they will chase just about anything. They love chasing a ball more than anything else in the world. Almost as much as fundraisers love to chase major gifts. <laughs> so, uh, we hear a lot of pushback from fundraisers wondering why they should pursue corporate sponsorships when they could, should be pursuing major gifts. Well, there are some really good reasons for that. It's a good question. Um, the answer is to think in terms of checks plural instead of check singular. Um, major gift, while well, yeah, you can split it up and they can be very complicated. Typically, you think of a major gift as a, a large single contribution, uh, where a cause marketing relationship with a corporate partner is going to provide you with uh, a continued source of income. So your income will be predictable uh, once you've got a relationship like this set up, which is a huge benefit to most nonprofits. Uh, you get a monthly check or a weekly, however you set it up, and that's money in the bank that you can count on. You've got an agreement with them, contract, and it's quid pro quo. They're paying you in exchange for benefit. And what you get from that is the halo effect. So if you choose the right corporate partner, they get the halo from choosing you and you get the halo from choosing them. So you want a corporate partner that is going to be respectable enough that people are going to be very impressed with it and that will in turn help you get additional donations for your cause. Great. Well, let's take a moment um, to and let's clarify some of the language that we're using. So, it, you know, today we are using almost interchangeably cause marketing with corporate sponsorships. Now, um, the terminology, just so that you can get your feet under you, cause marketing is the actual process that a for-profit will go through um, as far as aligning its self, its brand, its identity, its products with a cause. So. Um, from our side, from the nonprofit side, or from the partnership side, um, what we see is that that's part of that. Um, you know, we're getting compensated for using our cause um, on behalf of the for-profit. Now, this also blends into corporate social responsibility areas too. So we're using, you know, just for today, just so that you kind of keep your ears um, clear that we'll have cause marketing. Um, that's typically from the for-profit side. Corporate sponsorship is how we tend to look at things from the nonprofit side. And we're talking about both of those things together. All right. So for cause marketing programs, David, let's set the stage for why we should pursue those corporate sponsors and find out how to find the right partner. Yes. Um, cause marketing and corporate sponsorships can really be two slightly different things. And it's possible to get a corporate sponsor who's simply going to make a donation to your organization and allow you to say or use their logo on some of your materials to say that, that they sponsor you. Um, and they're not expecting anything in return. It's straight up a donation. Cause marketing is a little different in that it's an actual marketing program that you put together with the corporate sponsor and you're both marketing your cause for the benefit of your independent organizations. 
Uh, so it's purely a marketing relationship where both parties benefit from a symbiotic relationship of the two of you promoting your cause together. And it has no impact on each organization's bottom line. So it, it's a business relationship, pure and simple. Um, it's marketed, it's sold, it's delivered by your organization to a company that has an obvious connection to your cause. So Excellent. you need to remember it's marketing, not philanthropy. They're purchasing access to your brand. It's not a gift. Um, and because of that, you need to package an offering for them. They have an expectation of a return on their investment. Um, legally, they have one, and um, they're going to be motivated to do that. Also, the halo effect gives you that great symbiosis. Um, and if you structure things right, you're going to be in good shape. All right. Let's what we got? Aha! Uh -huh. Yay! So we were at the beach in the beginning, and now we've taken a deep dive. We're underwater. So, all right. What do we got? Why are those fish following a shark? That's a good question, Heidi. Those are pilot fish. If you've been with us before, you know I love scuba diving, and we'll often get uh, underwater pictures in here. So pilot fish there are with a white tip reef shark. You can see the white tip on its uh, dorsal fin and on its tail. Looks like it uh, bumped into the pink. Um, pilot fish have a symbiotic relationship with white tips. So when the shark eats something, the pilot, ship or, the pilot fish are there for the leftovers. So this is kind of how a good cause marketing relationship looks. The shark wants food, the pilot fish wants food, the pilot fish will eat parasites on the shark to help keep the shark clean and healthy, and then they clean up leftovers around it. By cleaning up the leftovers and keeping things neat and clean, other sharks don't show up so that the shark they're with thrives. So in that sense, it's a symbiotic relationship. The shark provides protection for the pilot fish. It's all good. They all get fed. Um, white tips aren't particularly aggressive and less provoked, so they make a great symbiotic partner for a pilot fish. Brings us to our first question. Uh, Joan P. asks, how can I choose the right corporate partners? Well, that is a very good question. The answer has multiple parts, really. Uh, where to find good partners and how to find a good one are two different things. So let's start with what to look for in a good partner. A good partner, you want them, obviously, to be committed to your cause. Um, so pull out all the stops, they, they have to believe in what you're doing. Um, so in that sense, you want somebody who truly is dedicated to what you're doing. Uh, it's actually pretty easy to find corporate sponsors that will simply uh, make a donation to you, and you're trying to put together a corporate sponsorship package, and they're just not seeing it. Uh, think of that as a donation. Obviously, take the money, but uh, in a corporate sponsorship um, cause marketing program, uh, they have to be committed to the cause because they're going to promote themselves around your cause. They have to be willing and able to fund it. So you need a big enough partner that they can enter into an agreement with you and actually fulfill on their end, uh, not come up short. So you, I mean, you need a, a fairly major corporation or a very, very dedicated partner to make this work. And then finally, they need to be willing and able to market your cause. So they're going to want to and need to promote your cause in relationship to their products or services. So let's now look at where these companies can be found. Where do you find people who can do these things? best place to look is to start at home. Um, you've got board members, and the board members, past, present, and future, are likely to have an affinity to your cause. I mean, that's how they got involved with you in the first place. So they're a very good place to start. Um, board members, typically, with uh, a lot of organizations, when they uh, take a position on your board, there's a, a monetary expectation on their part. Uh, in order to do that, they have to be fairly well-placed in an organization or independently wealthy. Chances are they're well-placed in an organization, 
and would have access to or be a decision maker in corporate sponsorships and be able to uh, take their interest in your cause and create a cause marketing relationship for you. Another place to look is going to be compatible businesses. And by that I mean companies that provide products or services that align with your mission, uh, like a, a pet mood fan manufacturer for a pet cause, um, uh, ocean foods manufacturer for uh, saving the oceans. So somebody who has a direct relationship and a very logical connection between what they do for business and what you're doing for your cause. Finally, you want to look to major donors. Uh, again, past, present, and future major donors. So research the heads of companies that can provide the kind of sponsorship that works for your cause. They're big enough, they're aligned with your cause, there's a logical relationship where they would get a benefit from promoting your cause, and perhaps you can use this to bring in yet another major donor by people who are either working for the company or who are on their board. So major donors can be a great place to look for additional folks to help your cause. <laughs> All right. So Nemo, huh? We're finding Nemo. Tell me, uh, what are we doing with clownfish here, David? Clownfish. Everybody loves a clownfish. Um, yeah, clownfish and sea anemones. This, this guy's in a purple sea anemone. Uh, they have a very equitable relationship, even more so than the shark and pilot fish that we saw a little bit ago. This is one of the great symbiotic relationships in the ocean. Clownfish, it turns out, are immune to the venomous sting that the anemones have. And the anemones use that venomous sting in order to kill other creatures that come near them and eat them. And the anemones live off the parasites, or the uh, I'm sorry, the, the clownfish live off the parasites that would harm the anemones. So the anemones are chowing down and parasites show up to eat the leftovers and the clownfish eat the parasites. So the anemone provides a home and protection for the clownfish because nothing else wants to get near there. They would get stung and die, which happens all the time. And the clownfish keeps the home tidy and healthy. And that brings us to our next question. Uh, Jeanette R. asks, how can I make sure we have an equitable relationship with our cause partner? Well, um, this may be the hardest part of cause marketing with a corporate partner. If nothing else, it's usually the lightning rod that's most likely to cause some kind of friction between you and your partner in the relationship. Uh, so just as the anemone and clownfish have a symbiotic relationship, it is imperative that both organizations in the partnership get what they want out of the arrangement. And you're very clear up front with what it is you want and what your expectations are. And the whole thing is set up to make that happen. So in order to make that happen, it helps to have clearly defined goals and objectives and benefits. So you need to know what it is you're both trying to accomplish. So you need to understand their business plan and how your cause relates to their business. And you both, both need to set measurable objectives um, so that we're going to hit these marks and get this benefit. And you want to know that the corporate sponsor is going to hit these marks and get their benefit. By defining those, you're going to be able to see whether there's going to be a conflict somewhere between what you're both trying to achieve and what you're going to do in order to measure it. And then you need to clearly define your roles, obligations, and deliverables. This is a business relationship. It's not a donation. Um, so you're going to have a role for marketing your cause related to their company, and they're going to have a role in marketing their company related to you and your cause. So you're both going to have obligations in that regard with what you're going to deliver as from a marketing standpoint on an ongoing basis and when that's going to happen. Uh, working from a calendar that 
these are the activities that you're going to do from a marketing standpoint, and these are the expectations you have because these are the objectives we're trying to meet. So you have a very clear list of deliverables that you have to put together and that they have to put together. And that's something you want to clearly define up front so that you can avoid that lightning rod where you get down the road and say, well, I didn't think that's what you meant. And finally, you need to have a documented structure for payment, for reimbursement, and for termination of the agreement. So, yeah, you need to define, all right, we're going to do these things for you, you're going to do these things for us in exchange for this amount of money paid in these terms on these dates to this account. We will have expenses because we're producing all of these marketing materials and delivering them. Uh, we get reimbursed for that in this manner, or it comes out of the payment, however you want to structure that. But almost the most important thing here is the termination agreement. If all of this goes south, uh, you want to know before you get into the relationship who gets what when you walk away, who's responsible for what when you walk away, so that nobody ends up suing anybody else. It's critically important to have a termination agreement. This is how it will end. It will end amicably no matter what. We're going to do X, Y, Z. You're going to do A, B, C, and we walk away. Critically important. Finally, you need a defined time frame. This is one that is we get a lot of questions about and a lot of pushback on. Um, most nonprofits would like nothing better than to have a corporate sponsorship in a cause relationship that gives you money every month ongoing for the rest of your life. It's kind of unrealistic. The company is going to change, you're going to change. Um, one single cause marketing program that you can put together isn't going to last uh, on and on for eternity. It's a marketing program. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And you need to be able to accept that and, and set a time frame for when this ends. That also helps you, again, with predictable income. You know what's coming in when, how long you're going to have it, and um, when it's all going to go away. This is really sounding, David. You talked a little bit about the differences between um, major gifts and, and um in cause marketing sponsorships and this kind of relationship like you said one it's equitable so not, not only are you pa not passing off all of the responsibility from one partner to another but you both have shared responsibility in each areas but it's also you know working out very specifically all the details as if you're working for a major gift or if you're writing a very large um, grant proposal so that all of the details are sorted out um, beforehand so it is a very similar process very very yes. detailed yes. alright so I see that we have I'm sorry go ahead Good point, Heidi. Yeah, we have got we have come up from under the sea. <laughs> it looks like yeah. uh, we've got a kitty cat who is very intently getting ready to pounce. He is. He might be or she might be ready to pounce on something from under the sea. Who knows? <laughs> um, looks like it's weighing its options, whether it's going to pounce or not, waiting for the right moment. Uh, that brings us to our next question. Uh, Jenny T wants to know that in weighing the risks and rewards of corporate sponsored cause marketing. What should I be considering? Well, we talked about rewards earlier, cash flow, stability, predictable income, halo effect. So the rewards are, are pretty solid. We know what those are. Um, the risks, on the other hand, are a little less clear. You risk a lot of things. Um, one, you're, you're risking your reputation. Uh, you're going to be basically getting married with that corporate sponsor. Uh, you will be joined at the hip. Your organization will be seen with them. You'll all be seen in public together. And whatever you do will reflect on them with the halo. Whatever they do will reflect on you with the halo, as long as you're both doing good things. And we know everybody has great intentions, and the road to hell is paved with great intentions. Sometimes bad things happen, and you need to know when bad things happen what you're going to do. So having a plan in place with your PR folks uh, or putting a plan in place that uh, enables you to mitigate bad circumstances is going to be very important in this regard. 
you uh, basically also expose your brand to these threats. We've talked about brand before. If you've uh, joined us for uh, any of our branding uh, webinars, we have one of those running now once a month. Um, exposing your brand to these threats can, can be harsh. Um, we talked about how much value your brand has. It could be as much as a third of your organization's net worth. And to expose that to a threat from a corporate sponsor, when something happens to them, uh, may not even be their fault, but un they get blamed for it. Uh, can you imagine if BP were one of your sponsors and uh, it made perfect sense for you to be working together and then they have the oil spill in the Gulf? Uh, so that kind of thing can come back to haunt you. So when you're choosing a partner, bear in mind, all right, what, from a risk standpoint, what could possibly go wrong? And let your mind go wild and try and figure out what could go wrong, how bad would that hurt us, should we get involved with these folks or not? One of the other things you give up is control. Not all control, but some control. Although in, in some relationships, we've, we've had uh, nonprofits come to us who have given up all control over the relationship. And the corporate sponsor does all of the marketing. Anything that goes out, has, it has to go through the uh, corporation first. And the nonprofit has no control whatsoever on it. That's a terrible, terrible relationship to have. And we've seen them before where it's in writing, this is codified, it's going to go on for the next 10 years, and it works like this. And they get the money, but oh my gosh, um, they have to run around putting out fires because the corporation is doing its thing, and it's not aligned completely with what the nonprofit's doing. So you give up some control. They have to market, they have to make a profit, they're going to use your name, they're going to use your cause. You're also going to do the same, so they're taking a risk as well and giving up some control. Um, but you have to be willing to accept that and, and be able to, to work with it. And understand that you could unwittingly become a victim. Um, if something bad goes wrong, we talked about BP a second ago, uh, if something like that happens, you could end up being a victim. Um, if your corporate sponsor decides to get into a different line of business that's suddenly completely incompatible with your cause, um, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. You can talk to them about it, ask them to put it off, but chances are that's not going to happen. Um, could develop a lot of problems. So try and think through how you could avoid being a victim up front and get everything structured so that that, that works out best for you. So. How do you make this work for you if you, uh, you do want to get into it? Some questions you should ask yourself as you're weighing the risks and rewards. One, are you a leading brand? Now, again, this is something we talk about in our branding webinar. Are you the only or the lead organization of your type in your market? Are you the big dog and the other organizations providing your types of services that would compete with you for funding are lesser organizations. And David, you've so mentioned not, it a couple of times that um, about the, the webinars, you're starting to talk about being a leading brand. The fundraising in the branded age is the webinar that you're talking about. And I've yeah. just put so that you, if you want to go sign up for that, it's a really great one to really get your nonprofit brand under control. Go ahead and register for that. It's in the chat box there. Oh, good. Thank you, Heidi. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, the question is, are, are you the big dog? Are they going to want to work with you, or are you one of many options they would have in the marketplace? So you want to be able to go in with uh, a power position that you own this market. Um, they're going to want to know if you have a track record. Have you done corporate sponsorships before? You should also find out if your partner has done corporate sponsorships before and has a track record. Uh, they may do corporate sponsorships all the time and have a terrible track record. Uh, people run away with their hair on fire. Might be that they have such a good program that all their contracts are already dialed in. They know exactly how to operate. Um, they can bring you in and help show you how to, to be a better uh, 
cause for them to work with. So it can work both ways. And finally, the last thing you need to consider when you're weighing the risks and rewards, can you deliver? I mean, honestly, can you produce all of the work that you're promising to produce? It's a really good question. I mean, you're, you're entering into a marketing relationship here. So if you're single-handedly the marketing and fundraising person and the only person wearing that hat in your organization, you're going to have to think long and hard about whether you can do uh, corporate sponsorships for cause marketing. That will bring on a lot of extra work. You're going to run a campaign, a marketing campaign that includes you and the company and they're going to do the same. And you're going to define it all up front. It's all going to be in writing. It's all going to be legal, signed contract, and you have to deliver. So you need to decide up front, can we do this? How are we going to do it? If you have a marketing department that can handle this kind of thing, um, you're in great shape. And it's just working through with them how they're going to work it into their normal workload, uh, perhaps what they're going to give up in order to uh, take this work on, um, might be an opportunity to give up some uh, small dollar fundraising efforts that marketing is doing trying to bring new names in the door and uh, use this instead in order to get names in the door. You'll still be in front of people and you can still collect donations that way but it would be a little less direct but you're being paid to do it. Um, another thing you want to consider is uh, the tax ramifications I know we didn't talk about that a little bit. You have to look wherever you're, whatever country you're in and see what the tax ramifications would be for a relationship like this. Remember I said it's not a donation, so it's not typically how money comes in your door. This is going to be earned income. You're working for the money you're getting and your uh, partner is also working and expecting a return. So they, they need something good to happen uh, on their bottom line as well. So this sounds like it's only for large organizations, David, and, and I do want to share that it's not necessarily the case. We have an organization that we work with just to, sh to give you the sense of the capabilities or the breadth that you can actually do with cause marketing that has all of um, a part-time executive director and a part-time office manager, and all of the rest is run um, by volunteers. They have an annual operating budget. <clears throat> of less than a hundred thousand dollars and they are a fantastic cause market they do really well with cause marketing um, alignments and um, they work um, with very large organizations and they've got a wonderful constituency so um, don't let the um, amount of work um, or the kind of partnership make you feel that you can't benefit from this because it is a very, very um, important thing. And it's also, an, an, you know, increased people are really looking towards brands to make sure that they are actually socially aligned. So you've got a lot of power as a nonprofit, no matter how large you are or how small you are, to really bring some value to those brands. All right, we've got a, we've got another kitty cat. We seem to be on some themes today, underwater and cat. So, um, <laughs> and he seems to be. Uh, what's he doing there, David? Are, are you are you He's holding it together? He's, and I'm looking cute, I, a cute little mitten paw. Um, he's a little furry guy. I like him. Uh, he needs to work on his hiding skills a little bit. He's not being too confident there. Uh, brings us to our next question. Uh, Janet R. asks, how should I approach and lock in a potential corporate partner? <laughs> well, you probably don't want to sneak up on him like, uh, like no, our cat friend here. No, you boldly make your case, and this, this is not being bold. Uh, not being bold at all. Um, to, to get in to make your case, first you're, you're going to need to do uh, quite a bit of research in order to find the right partner. We talked about where to look and what to look for. Um, so as you're doing research and finding potential companies, obviously you want to find out what is the logical connection between what they do for a business and your cause and how you uh, provide benefit to the community for your cause. So that's where that alignment comes from, and you need to know that there's alignment before you ever make the first contact with the organization. Uh, so that you're sure going in the door that this makes perfect sense, and that the only reason they should have for not wanting to do this is going to be that they don't have the capacity, the money, 
Uh, they don't do corporate sponsorships, something that you have no control over. But if you go in the door and you know there's a logical connection, um, it's going to be much easier for you to make your case. And you have to know if they're the right size. Are they big enough? Are they too big? Uh, if, if they're a giant global corporation, they may be able to work on a local level with a, a small organization, uh, but they may not. I mean, they may have their corporate dollars uh, going to major global organizations. So you need to look and, and decide whether it's going to be a good fit. Um, are you the size of an ant looking for Godzilla to help you? That's probably not a great fit. Uh, you don't have to be the same size, but uh, compatible. You need to be able to work with their organization and communicate with them. And remember, you're, you're in a business relationship here, so it's not like going in and asking for a donation. Uh, there are going to be day-to-day -day communications, um, materials going back and forth. Uh, you're doing business with these people just the same way you would with one of your vendors. Do they have a process? This can make all the difference in the world. If they already have a process in place to manage cause marketing and corporate sponsorships and have a department that does this, many large corporations have a department that does this, and they can be great for uh, local work, um, local organizations. Uh, they're set up to handle it. Everything is ducks in a row. This is part of how they do business. That's ideal. That makes it much, much easier. And you can learn a lot from that and build your track record. So as you go forward and you're looking for additional partners and trying to grow your organization, uh, you can have worked with someone who is a big dog in the field. And uh, obviously that the halo from that is going to be terrific and help you get in the door of other relationships. Lastly, you want to look, do you have a relationship with the corporation? So this is something similar you do for uh, major gifts as you're doing your research. Do, you know, who do I know that knows this person? Do I know this person? How can I meet them? How can I run into them? If you can develop a relationship with the decision maker up front before you ever get to, hey, would you be interested in, uh, you're going to have a much higher probability of success. Uh, they know you, you know them. Uh, you, you have a relationship, you're friendly with one another, they know what you do, they know you know what they do, and it's just a whole lot easier then to broach that conversation. So before you get in the door, once you decide who is a logical connection, start looking for the players who are involved. Find them, find where they go, what do they belong to, what do they participate in, and find out who you know that knows them that can introduce you and get in there and start building that relationship just as you would with a donor. But this is going to be a business relationship that turns into uh, a, a marketing program that both of you will benefit from. So next we have uh, the never fail case statement. Heidi, can you walk us through this and how it works? Sure, sure. And it's an important part, especially when you're putting together cause marketing relationships from your standpoint, your causes standpoint, that you're able to tell your story extremely compellingly well. You're going to not only have to do it on behalf of yourself, but you're going to have to do it on behalf of the cause that you're or the organization that you're getting aligned with. And you're also going to have to teach them um, to tell your story. You can't rely on them to take your story and then turn it into something magically beautiful for you. And the fabulous thing about using this case structure is that you can also put your own proposal and your own pitch for your cause marketing uh, partner together into this format. So this is how you would actually convince them to become involved. So let me let me describe what, what this looks like. And, and there's four parts to it, and every part has a very simple statement. So no matter what part of your story it is that you're telling, it, it will fall into one of these particular areas. So the need. Now, whatever, whatever it is that your organization addresses, what's that need, the cause, the problem, um, whatever, whatever it is that your organization exists um, for. If it's to make the world a more beautiful place through the arts and culture, fantastic. Describe the empty, desolate wasteland without, um, without the arts. Again, um, you want to keep those parts of your statement and telling that never-fail case statement um, story very, very stark. Only talk about the need 
uh, the problem, the crisis, whatever it is. So you start there. Next thing is the solution. This is what your organization does to solve this or provides in order to come in there. And this is a great place for alignment with your cause marketing partner. So this is where the alignment happens. If you've got a solution that comes together that they're behind, that's a great place to talk about that. And it specifically addresses that need um, or that problem or crisis that you've very starkly outlined in your your need. The next thing that you go on down here is you talk about impact, and you're talking about impact not of your necessarily of your solution or only of your solution, but you're talking about the impact of the people who are involved. So the the impact that the your your partner will get. Um, how is that going to change what they're doing or how is that going to affect them, the impact of the people that support your cause? Um, how is it changing them? Um, what kind of an impact are you making on the community? What kind of impact are you making um, overall? So, you know, against the, the, the need, the problem, or the crisis. So when you're talking about impact, again, remember that you're going to very clearly define each one of these specific sections for your case structure. Um, you want to be as clear as you can and think of how many different levels or layers of impact are available to you. And then of course you have your urgent ask. This is your call to action. This is what people need to do. This is what you're asking them to do on behalf. And in a cause marketing uh, partnership, this is what your the, the uh, your, pro your for-profit partner is asking people to do to benefit your cause or to align with them. Or, you know, in your case, it's what you are asking people uh, in your constituency to do to support your partner or how you're working together. So thinking about a call to action in that urgent ask, and again, the idea there is that it is urgent, right? You're not asking people to think about something and get back to you, but you're actually telling them why this is important that they act now in whatever way that you're doing. Now, again, if you put this into your proposal structure, right, um, you're going to talk about um, – a cause marketing partner here for that has a need. They have a need for something that you as a cause can provide, whether it's leverage with a constituency or if it's alignment for a cause, if it's going to help support um, and reach a different demographic than the organization is already reaching. If it is providing specifically effective um, marketing dollars um, back to their organization that they can get a, a bigger impact and have more traction by working together with your cause. Those are great things. Those are, those are great needs. Those are empty empty holes um, that you can really describe in your proposal or as your proposal. And of course, then the solution is the partnership and how it might work and a couple of the, the things that might that might do and by working together, you're going to actually solve um, this problem that perhaps they didn't necessarily know that they need or maybe it'll be seen as an opportunity. And then that impact, how are they going to look at the end of the relationship? Um, that's how I would really kind of think about if you're putting your proposal together, you know, after a year of working in this particular thing, you'll have to have five campaigns um, and you want to, you know, again, give, paint the picture um, as far as um, the benefits back to your, your potential partner as well as the benefits back to you because again remembering it's a two-way street um, that you're talking about impact so you're going to keep that in mind and then the urgent ask specifically what is the next step and what is it that you want to do so use again it's kind of a great thing one you want to make sure that you can tell your own organization story whatever whatever that case statement is for your organization story use this structure on your social media in your proposals when you're talking to people, use the structure and it's very engaging. You can also use it again for your marketing um, partner. You're going to use it to train them. You're going to give them snippets from each of these four categories so that they can model that for you. And you're also going to help them tell their story using this particular, um, particular four-step piece in the never fail case statement. All right, David, so that fills that part in. What's next? Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Heidi. That gets you to a point where now you have an opportunity to close things. And the first thing you're going to want to do, um, Janet R. wanted to know, how should I approach and lock in a potential corporate partner? Well, here we go. Uh, first, you need a written agreement that spells out the entirety of the scope of the relationship. Every little thing, full contract, beginning, middle, and end covers all contingencies and the entire process you're going to go through. Needs to include how you're going to break up should the need arise. Needs to spell out the benefits, the time frame, the obligations, the deliverables, and remedies for noncompliance. All of it needs to be on there. Chances are you're going to need to get lawyers involved. 
it's very likely that your corporate sponsor will, and it's very likely that you need to do the same. If your corporate sponsor is already set up to work with nonprofits and to provide cause marketing programs, and they have all the documentation in place, and they just hand it to you, and here's how it works, don't just sign it. Go through the whole thing with your attorney and talk about what each line in that agreement really means. Um, I've found when somebody hands me a contract that I've had no input on, it's usually written for their benefit and not mine. Uh, and you need a mutually beneficial relationship here. Both sides need to be happy. So you get the lawyers involved, you look through, you talk through how, how all of this is going to work, and work through how to make it a good experience for, for both parties and it'll be much easier for you to be successful. You'll both be happy with one another, and there's a very good chance you can continue the relationship. So good luck with that. And you know, David, while we're talking about documenting, I'm, I'm thinking that one of the things that's very helpful um, is to do uh, performance reports. So as you're actually executing, um, then you'll keep, you'll keep a log of what's happening with your, with your cause marketing sponsor so that you can provide samples and instances. So you'll keep kind of a journal and then turn that into a report so that you have regular communications um, with your mar marketing partner. And they should, they'll be doing that back to you. So again, it, um, even though you know, pulling in lawyers can sound scary, it doesn't have to be, and it shouldn't be um, adversarial. It should actually be, all right, well, I want to make sure that we've really got a similar understanding. And then it would move directly into different kinds of documentation and reporting. Um, again, so the communication stay open and clear. It's not a set and forget. It's not a set your, set your agreement and start collecting checks, and then you're off in your camp doing your execution, and they're off in their camp doing their execution. You're actually working together. So um, you know, setting it up for reporting at the beginning is a great way to do that. All they're, right. They're going to be very used to measuring their marketing and, and uh, looking at stats to see how things are performing. Uh, perhaps they can help you with that if you're not doing that now, you, you should be. Um, but yeah, I, both parties are going to want to see results as to what's going on and be able to follow the numbers all the way through it. All right. Yay. So it's time for questions. I'm going to go back and take a look at some of the ones that were submitted as we went to talking. and. And um, we'll pull that up. So now take a breath. I know this has been a pretty deep discussion, so pretty heady. So hang in there tight because we've got some great stuff coming up. All right. Um, let's see. Elaine B. Uh, Elaine asks, actually, she says that I've inherited a corporate sponsorship in my new position. And it happens to be one-sided, and we are not the side. Oh, Elaine, we've been in all situations like that. <laughs> what can I do uh, to level the playing field? So... Good question, Elaine. We've all we've all inherited things that um, we have to kind of live through and then sort out. So, David, why don't you take that on? Yeah, um, it, it really depends on on what the problem is. Um, it, they may be very open to uh, restructuring the agreement. And it, we, you don't know how your predecessor got into it, probably, um, or or how the whole thing ended up structured that way. A face-to-face -face with the contact person at the sponsoring organization is going to be the best place to start. And just be open and honest with them and tell them, like, this is, this is what I see. Do you see it this way as well? Um, this is how this is impacting our organization and uh, how it's, it's probably not good. Um, is there any way we can make things work? like this and offer up a few alternatives that would be acceptable to you. Um, so present a plan basically that, that explains how the uh, relationship could be more equitable uh, and give them some options. Um, and be self-effacing when you do it. Say, you know, you're, you're asking, you're going with your hat in your hand, um, but you got to come in the door with solutions, not just guns blazing, hey, this is a mess. And you got to show them how it's going to benefit them. Uh, they're always going to want to see what's what's in it for them. So you're going to need to go in the door with solutions that help you and make the relationship equitable. And if you do that, here are all the good things that are going to happen for your partner. Uh, they'll be much more likely to get on board then. That's a tough one. Good luck with that. <laughs> 
Yep, it will all turn out well. Again, communication is the key. And George, thanks for that um, nudge. He mentioned, George, just to let folks know, just um, he was drawing an analogy between our last uh, recommendation as far as setting up your cause marketing relationship um, for reporting from the beginning, um, that that's something very similar to the way that you might set up a large uh, grant relationship or an ongoing grant relationship that you're oh, reporting yeah. out. Yeah. Yep, yeah. and it can be, it doesn't have to be stuffy and formal, you know, one of the, um, you know, I mentioned the organization that we were working with that's very small, well, you know, they, they do a monthly um, kind of almost like a newsletter, a very chatty thing, this is what we did, and this was cool, and this was a cool story that we encountered in one of the um, marketing activities that we did, and um, or in one of the events, and hey, we had this conversation about this, so they include anecdotes, and again, take a very conversational approach, so um, while you do want to back up what it is that you're doing, again, just treat it as a relationship relationship treat it because you got married right and so you want to shower the love on your partner so take mm -hmm. take that together that's great okay now we're just coming up on a little bit on the end of our time here so if we didn't get to your question today hang tight because we'll be answering that um, shortly now we've got a great stuff for future digging in um, so let's take a look. If you want to know more about um, what we covered today, we have a fantastic relationship with Cause Planet. Well, who's Cause Planet? They are fantastic and they make all things possible. What they do is they actually go through in fundraising and in the nonprofit sphere and they create book summaries. Like who has time to read a whole book these days, right? So Cause Planet boils down the heart of the information and it's delivered to you very quickly. They also happen to have great resources like discussions and author interviews. And at Mosaic, we happen to love Cause Planet, and Cause Planet is sending the love right back. So when you go onto their site and um, use the promo code Mosaic at checkout, you get 10% off of your whole entire order. So if you want to dig deeper into what we've covered today, these are your custom-tailored solutions from Cause Planet. And all of these books tackle development, staffing, motivation, management, um, everything that you really need to do to balance your cause marketing relationships. So. And I'm going to put some links here um, for you so that you can you can take a look at the specific ones as we go. Um, the first one is creating value in nonprofit business collaborations. What that what is that? That is um, that's going to cover sources and types of value in nonprofit slash business um, collaboration. So again, defining your value and who, what it is that you're attracting with a for-profit partner is going to be a great place to start. Um, taking again a very collaborative approach, looking at the best formation and implementation processes for your organization so that you can optimize that value. Um, and explore the value mindset and how it uh, benefits and, and impacts. Um, the next thing that um, you want to take a look at is fundraising with businesses, 40 new and improved strategies for nonprofits. And this one takes, it, it, this was a great one because it's lots and lots of case stories. So you can see very instructive um, examples and reminders of really creative ways to incorporate business partnerships and revenue into your fundraising plan. Um, you're going to get inspired to grow your corporate network and your involvement beyond just a single strategy of asking for check and identifying what companies really want from your nonprofit partners. So it's a great one there to take a look at there. Then cause marketing for nonprofits. Partner for purpose, passion, and profits. Um, and this book is really going to help you, um, or this summary here, if you go to Cause Planet, uh, uh, is going to um, give you a good growing model for a collaboration between corporations and nonprofit causes. And implementation um, they look at some of the challenges with implementation. So they really help you look at, you know, way and measure again the benefits and opportunities that a cause marketing relationship can bring while reducing the number of potential challenges. So again, a little bit more in-depth um, from what we talked about today. Good starting points, great stuff. So enjoy uh, Cause Planet. They are fantastic. We love them. What's coming up next, David? Okay, our next Master Circle session. So remember, Master Circle is cool because if we didn't get your question today, it's not the end of the world. We're we're going to ask you again um, and we're going to cover additional topics so what I want you to do is mark your calendar now um, the next uh, session is on June 25th you're going to of course receive email for an instructions and if you've got a question or something that's burning on your mind go ahead and grab that link make a suggest as far as a, a, a suggestion as far as the topic for us to cover and we will certainly pull that in now I want you also to hang on tight because the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to have actually need you to vote. We've got some great submissions for topics that have come in, and we want to also know what's on your mind. So if you hang on at the end of the session here today, don't close your browser down. A quick survey is going to pop up. 
Um, if you wouldn't mind helping us out, give us your brutally honest feedback, but also vote. Vote for the topic um, for next session. We really want to know what's on your mind uh, and coming out, so take a look at that. And hey, stay in touch. Um, some other great resources that we have here. We'd love to see you um, at, the, um, at our blog. We've got great uh, resources for um, all kinds of cause marketing and sponsorship uh, information back there. That's fantastic. Um, and we do. You can join in the crazy things. Get us on our social media hangouts. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're doing silly stuff sometimes on G+. G+. So take a look there. That'll be fantastic. So thank you so much. I've loved having you here today. Yes, great questions. David, it was fantastic hearing your um, suggestions here about cause marketing. Thank you, Heidi. I had a good time. Fantastic. And we're going to see you on the flip side. So hang in there. See you in July. And don't go away. Watch that survey.